There's been a lot of buzz about Infinity being very good, and it's not bad. Out of curiosity, why do you ask? Here's five good reasons that Adobe Photoshop is still better than Infinity Photo. First, we're talking about a few different things. We're going to talk about opening speeds. Affinity versus Photoshop. Now, Affinity breaks that are super, super fast, and I think in an Affinity only environment that might necessarily be the case, but I did test some things. I tested opening up Photoshop and I tested opening up Affinity. I opened up Affinity first on my computer. Uh, the software opened up in 15.2 seconds. And then while having Affinity open, I did open Photoshop at the same time or immediately after with Affinity still open, taking some of the memory. It took 12 seconds exactly to open up Photoshop. So in opening the software, it was a little bit faster. In terms of the speed factor, which is part of this first step, I also did open up these three photos, Bold, Called, and uh, Agape, in Affinity and in Photoshop. And I did have some seconds uh, to share. The Called image took 8.56 seconds to open in Affinity, in Photoshop 6.63 seconds. The Bold image took 6.29 seconds in Affinity, and it took just 4.55 seconds in Photoshop. And the Agape image took in Affinity 5.95 seconds, and Photoshop 3.84 seconds. So that was a little bit faster in Photoshop. Now, I will say that they were using Photoshop files. Once I saved my bold image as a uh, Affinity file, I was able to open that a lot faster, and it did open in about two and a half seconds. So, but that's also a fourth, a quarter of the size. In all fairness, it had converted it in the process. I lost all my smart objects and my raw files. Uh, so it did lose some of the editing ability in the smart objects, which I'll talk about later in this video. So in all fairness, uh, it did save some files, uh, shrink some files, and it did open up a little bit faster. Though I think it is comparable in terms of speed in that regard. Looking at the thing with histogram, it did keep that in Infinity, which was, I guess, a positive thing for Infinity. Well, what does Affinity do with large bulk images? I do a lot of weddings. I shoot large groups of sessions. I need to make sure my editing does well. When I went ahead and opened 20 images in Affinity, it didn't do well. I opened up 20 images, and what happened, it actually crashed my computer. It took about three, four minutes. I was trying to exit out, trying to hit escape to cancel the process. Eventually, it shut down my recording. It shut down everything on my computer. I had all control delete and actually closed the software uh, after several minutes of waiting. With Photoshop opening 20 raw files and 20 JPEGs at the same time, it took me 31.4 seconds. Uh, it opened up the JPEGs one at a time in Photoshop. And then it also opened up the raw files in Adobe Camera Raw where I could do by batch edit. So, Definitely, if you're doing a lot of images, you're going to have to use Photoshop for those raw edits. Doing bulk edits, uh, it definitely needs to have Photoshop doing the power of handling many images in bulk, which is definitely where Photoshop excelled at, according to my time-tested uh, tests. Number two that I found super, super helpful was the ability for Photoshop to open up a file and to drag it into a particular piece. Once you've got a photo, open in the different tabs in Photoshop. It's easy enough, it's been this way for a number of different options to open up the file in its own tab and drag it into the next piece. So I can click and drag, hold and control, and I can drop it into the next piece. It may give me a warning for different color patterns if they're different. It may not, depending on my color settings. And now this photo is in the timeline of my Photoshop file. Of course, this doesn't really work well in this piece, but it did a pretty good job in this area. With Affinity, if I have multiple photos open, it didn't do very well with opening them up at the same time. First of all, open up my raw file. It opens up here as a raw file. I can do my edits. That was kind of nice. I can do my edits kind of the same ballpark. But when I switch over to my Infinity option, I need to be able to convert this file. So it doesn't really do a good job of converting the file uh, easily into my next file. I could do a copy paste. That didn't do it. Uh, it doesn't give me the option just to click and drag, use the hand tool and drag it over here. I couldn't use any option that I could find. Maybe there's something there, but I was trying a way to get it to copy over there and it was just not working to be able to drag and drop it into the next file like Adobe does. So that was a frustration. Uh, with a raw file, I had to convert it over, uh, which was a little bit of a pain. If I have a JPEG file, now the JPEG file, if I have a JPEG file open here, I also have it. Now I can edit it and drag it, but I can't drop it into it. So I could go ahead and select it all, 
Control C to copy, Command on a Mac, and I could paste it into my document, and that's okay, but I couldn't actually bring it in with just an easy dragging option. So it gets a little bulky uh, in that regard. I, that's a factor I use a lot when I do a lot of composites. Uh, it does work uh, with that option, but it won't also allow you to do some smart object edits. Number three for Photoshop is the smart object handling. When I bring in a file, and I've done many of these, I've done dozens of these complex Photoshop digital montage type pieces, and Affinity has the option to do some of this work, is once I have a photo open here, uh, I do have my files in here with a smart object, which means this is a raw file that I opened up from Adobe Camera Raw, brought into the file, that I have the option to have it as a raw file where I can now have the entire piece in the file. Now, Affinity will allow you to have the entire piece. It allows you to do masking. I'll talk about that in a second. But what it doesn't do is this little smart object, if I double click it, in Photoshop, I double click it open, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw, all the edits, all the things that I've done non-destructively to my file, the edits, the files, the edit, the uh, zooming in and out, those files can all be changed. Let's do something drastic here. Hit OK, and it will actually change that in the piece, and it will make those edits quite nicely. And it's all editing, updating in the smart object, Adobe Camera Raw embedded file. Part of the reason this was a bigger file is the Adobe Camera Raw uh, file from my Canon camera is embedded into the piece. If I go to Infinity, and I take a look at the file with anything that is a smart object, it is actually imported, or it will bring it in if I'm using it in an Infinity workflow. It actually has the files kind of nested into itself. So if I take this file here, I open it up, it's now got it as a mask, I could take my mask and I could paint black and hide it, or I could go ahead and paint it back and paint back that information, but I can't open it up and make all the raw edits and adjustments to the raw file like I could in Photoshop. So if you're doing a lot of digital montage, that is a plus in my book to what uh, Photoshop can do. Number four is AI selection. The ability not just to manipulate files, that's kind of cool and kind of gimmicky at some level, but with AI, the power of that in Photoshop is there, where in Affinity Photo 2 at this point, it is not in there at all. Now, of course, there's discussions on the problems with uh, artificial intelligence and some of the policy agreements of Photoshop. That's partially why I'm looking at Affinity and been exploring with Affinity more. But the ability to come here, we'll have an object selection and be able to click and drag in an area and very quickly select something is pretty powerful. Because selection, that is something you cannot do yet in Affinity. If I have a raw file open, the artificial intelligence, when I go into my mask, and I want to go ahead and select the subject, select the sky, select the background, in my masking, my selecting, it will automatically do a pretty good job of selecting the subject matter in Adobe where that isn't even something possible in the Affinity side. So here, automatically, it did a pretty good job of selecting me in the piece, and I can now go ahead and make my adjustments. And it, you can see it did a pretty good job of selecting me. Maybe not a perfect job, but a whole lot better than going ahead and starting with this as a baseline with some type of lasso tool or selection tool. Now what, in fairness, does Affinity offer? If I go ahead and open up a file, let me go ahead and open up um, one of these different pieces. If I want to go ahead and select the guy playing the tuba, what do I need to do? I can come up to my selection brush and I can go ahead and select it and it does some automatic settings to select my guy with the tuba. Is it as quick and convenient? No. Is it pretty good? It's not bad. It's not bad. But Photoshop definitely takes the cake when it comes to doing our selection options and quickly, easily, and accurately selecting anything there. Aside from all of the other artificial intelligent photo generation options that AI has come to being very, very powerful at. Got some ability to do some selections, some options, but it definitely has some things to be desired when selecting your piece and before you go ahead and do any type of masking of your piece. Number five is the layer effects preview. If I go ahead and open up my file here, so I'm gonna create a new layer here. I'm going to go ahead and just paint something on it, paint some different options on here, just show you what the effects can do in Photoshop. 
I have my effects on my layer one. I'm gonna add a special effects. I can do the same options in Affinity, in all fairness. And I can go ahead and change a lot of these different settings. It might look slightly different. But the thing I like here is as I make the changes, I can actually see the preview actually appear on my screen. In Infinity, I don't have the option to turn the preview on and off. Uh, and to be able to turn them off one at a time, I can do some of that in Infinity. But to be able to turn off all my previews so that I make all my changes, all my different options here, my inner shadows and my different styles, I'm gonna do some pretty major changes to my file. And I can see that all on and off with the preview option and I can isolate and change each one. Now I can see them in Infinity. Let's go ahead and take a look at that now, see what we can do in Infinity. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, put it at the top, like I did in all fairness, a little bit of painting on it. It's a little glitchy, definitely right now in Infinity. I think it's just overwhelmed with some of the recording and the other things going on with the computer. So I think it's having a hard time processing all this power. Photoshop's doing a good job still. I have a go ahead in my pixel count here in this file, go back to effects, and it has the similar option that Photoshop has. And I can go ahead and give it a outline, which is great. And I can see one at a time. but I'm not able to turn them all on and off at once. Now, that's not the end of the world, I suppose, for some people, uh, but it's nice to be able to see it before and after without having to go ahead and clicking several boxes or all the boxes if you've got major changes on it as well. So I think having a preview button for all the options uh, would be nice when I'm doing some of the different effects and my adjustment layers, having an option for a preview on and off on all my layers would be something super, super helpful. Thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and hit like, comment, subscribe. I'd like to see you in the next video. Leave some comments about why you think Infinity Photos may be better, still have some things to improve, or what you like best about Infinity Photo, or maybe even Photoshop.